Good morning. For anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Jackie. I'm the new associate, and um, this morning I have the welcome. So good morning to everyone. Welcome to worship today. Um, pull out your attendance pads in the pew, and um, you can go ahead and start writing down any prayer requests you have for later to put into the offering plate. And uh, who's ready to worship? If you would stand for the opening hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King. Creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Oh, praise ye, Alleluia. Oh, brother, son with golden beam. Oh, sister, moon with silver gleam. Oh, praise ye. join me in the call to worship. Here in this place, God welcomes all the dreamers as well as the doubters. <clears throat> Warriors and wanderers can call on God by name. Here in this time, we can remember all the ways God has graced us. Here are gathered those daring enough to step out of comfort into the unknown. <clears throat> Here, in the face, we will find the courage to cry out, God save us in every situation. Will you join me in prayer? Lord, 
We are here today ready to worship. You can, we ask you to open our hearts and fill us with your message. In your name, amen. You may be seated. If you pull out your insert, your GPS, your Girl Pray and Study Guide, uh, you'll find there announcements, uh, a prayer list that we'll need later in the service. On the back, you'll find discussion questions for your life group or your family to go deeper into uh, today's message. I want to share a few uh, uh, opportunities and announcements uh, with you. Uh, first, we announced last Sunday that with the redecorating of the, uh, the parlor, uh, it's a multi-use space, and one of the uses we're going to have for that now is as a prayer space. So on any Sunday morning, uh, if, if the Spirit touches something in you and you want to talk more about it or pray about it, uh, if you have something that... Um, is going on and you'd like prayer, even if your birthday's that week and you just want a blessing for your birthday, come back to the, uh, to the parlor chapel there and uh, one of the pastors will be there and we would love to pray with you. I had three people take advantage of that last week, so I think we're off to a good start uh, with that and we're, the church is never better than when we're in prayer. Uh, Vacation Bible School is right around the corner, August 1st through 4th. Registration's open for that. Uh, right now there's a display uh, in the narthex for items that uh, they need to be donated for VBS. Somebody took the one for the gallon of baby oil. So now my joke is over. Um, and I'm really disappointed about that. But thanks for those who have already taken things to donate. Uh, and, uh, those, and please take a look at what's uh, left there. Uh, this Friday night, we're going to have a church outing at the Peoria Chiefs game. Uh, it's a 635 game. Tickets are $10 each. Today is the last day you can sign up for that, uh, and you can sign up at the Connection Center. On Sunday, July 31st, that's a fifth Sunday, so we'll only have one worship service at 10 o'clock. Uh, you can check out the rest of the announcements there uh, on your own and find ways to plug into things happening in the life of the church. I want to call now upon the ushers to come and move among us and receive our morning tithes and offerings as an act of worship and stewardship over all that God has given to us. Pray with me. Lord, I pray that you would bless these tithes and gifts and love offerings, that you would stretch and multiply them, that you would use them to further your kingdom here in Tremont and around the world. We pray that you would bless the gift as well as the giver. In the name of Jesus, amen. 
you may be seated as we continue to worship by singing Jesus is all the world to me. We have the opportunity now to go to the Lord in prayer. So if you'd uh, take your GPS back out, you'll see a prayer list there of uh, names and situations that we've been asked to pray for. And we always encourage you to uh, hold that in your hand as we pray on Sunday mornings, but also to take it home and keep it in a place where you can see it. And uh, whether you know every name and, and situation or not, uh, to be faithful in lifting, lifting them up to our Father. Um, we was given a couple more this morning and a couple of uh, updates uh, as well. Uh, we had a couple people have uh, surgery uh, this week, uh, Dr. Mike Thomas, and he's at home and recovering uh, well. His pain is uh, well managed, but continue to pray for him and certainly for Kathy. Um, because she said he is able to speak. Uh, so, uh, and until she gives him a bell, it's going to be uh, a thing. Uh, Martha Jane had some foot surgery on Friday. Uh, she said that she's doing well. Her pain is well managed. She just says it's awkward getting around. Uh, so she'll be looking forward to worshiping online uh, this, this evening. Uh, have a prayer request here for the family of Evelyn Anderson, uh, which is Janet Camden's aunt. Uh, and then one for everyone who's starting over or starting something new. Uh, it's been... Um, it's been a, a long couple of weeks with, with heavy uh, prayer requests with, uh, for people uh, having surgery and uh, people that we've been praying for walking through dark situations and people um, getting, getting uh, new medical uh, diagnoses and uh, trying to figure out which way is up. Uh, and in the midst of all of that, I don't know what you're going through, but my sense is that we all are walking through something in some way. And here's what I want to say to you. God never promised us that it would be easy when we follow Jesus. He did promise that he would be with us, 
and that we could call ourselves children and friends of God and that there's nowhere that you'll go, there's no situation that you'll walk into in this life that the Holy Spirit is not with you. In fact, that the Holy Spirit has not gone before you to prepare the way. So no matter what you're walking through, just rest in that presence and rest knowing that God is with you. In that spirit, let's begin as we always do with a time of silent prayer. Allow the Lord to see what's on your heart and for the Holy Spirit to deal with you. And then I'll lead us together in a morning prayer. Let's pray. Father, I pray right now that you would send the gentle wind of your Holy Spirit to blow across the embers of our hearts and to fan us into flame for Jesus. Lord, what a privilege it is to gather together with other believers. Imperfect as we are, we gather here to acknowledge that we're trying to live our lives in accordance with your will that we're doing our best to follow Jesus, to allow him to be the Lord and master of our lives. And when we're gathered together, we're reminded that we're not alone on this journey, that there are other people who are on this same journey of following Jesus. We pray that you would send the Holy Spirit right now into this place, that you would spur us on, and that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you would encourage us in our discipleship to Jesus, our apprenticeship to him. That you would do something in this hour that we set aside to worship. He would do something in our hearts that when we leave this place, we might be just a little more like Jesus than when we first came in. Lord, I thank you for all of the many joys in our lives, for for successful medical procedures and, and good recovery, for opportunities to start over, to start new things. God, we're also mindful of the many concerns on our prayer list, those that were added this morning and those concerns that are represented by folks gathered in this room and those watching online. And it seems like, God, all of us find ourselves walking through something that's hard. Something that we'd rather not walk through. Whether it's a medical situation, a relational one, or it just feels like that kind of season. There are some things in this life that we can't get around, that we can't just get over. We have to go through them. And God, if we have to go through these situations, we thank you that you have promised to be with us always. That you go with us into these, these dark places, that you journey with us on roads that we'd rather not travel on. And that whether it's a day of sunshine or rain, whether our cup is overflowing or it feels bone dry, you're still there with us. There's no place, your word says, that we could flee from your presence. So for all of these concerns, we pray that you would do that which we've seen you do countless times before. That you would reveal yourself in a mighty and powerful way. 
that you would bring your healing touch in mind, body, and spirit. That you would give exactly what is needed in the moment that it is needed according to your will. That as we look over this list, as we consider the concerns represented in this room, that these folks that we pray for would know right now the power of your presence, the comfort of your grace. Lord, we, as always, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. He's redeemed us by his cross. And by his resurrection has reminded us that the worst things in our lives never have to be the last. So we ask all of these things in his name and pray together in the way that he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to invite you to stand as you are able as we join our voices together in affirming our faith. Let's declare together what, what we believe. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. yesterday or two days ago when Mike had his surgery and that means the world to us you know praying with us thinking about us and for all of you we could hear you we could feel you thank you so much he's got to be fine yeah he's got this scar I mean it's really it's worth it just to see that <laughs> <laughs> but he he does you know he's fine if, you know if you want to just stop in and talk and and Theme, do it because you know he's real he's really doing good and you know we all need each other so thank you very much for everything that our church we know we could feel it believe me and now I have to play this okay this is a little cutie thing by Mozart so you can be impressed because it's Mozart
The scripture today comes from Genesis 37. I'm going to read verses 24 through 27 and then skip down to 39, 1 through 4. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Then they grabbed him and threw him into the cistern. Now the cistern was empty. There was no water in it. Then, just as they were sitting down to eat, they looked up and saw a caravan of camels in the distance coming towards them. It was a group of Ishmaelites, traders, taking a load of gum, balm, and aromic resin from Gilead down to Egypt. Judas said to his brothers, what will we gain by killing our brother? We'd have to cover up the crime. Instead of hurting him, let's sell him to those Ishmaelite traders. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. And his brothers agreed. When Joseph was taken to Egypt by the Ishmaelite traders, he was purchased by Potiphar, an Egyptian officer. Potiphar was the captain of the guard for the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. The Lord was with Joseph, so he succeeded in everything he did as he served in the home of his Egyptian master. Potiphar noticed this and realized that the Lord was with Joseph, giving him success in everything he did. This pleased him, so he soon made Joseph his personal attendant. He put him in charge of his entire household and everything he owned. This week is the second week of the series, Yes, You. Last week, we learned about David and how God used the unexpected brother to slay the giant. David trusted that God would be right there to take Goliath down. David, the shepherd boy who loved playing his harp and protecting his sheep. How easy would it be to stay near the things that we love and not step out for God? How easy would it be to ignore the belly aches and the belly aching? How hard is it to hear and live the belly aches, the belly aches of the Holy Spirit? We say we're too busy, but God makes the time when we trust him too. We say we're not qualified. No one is ever qualified. But God is in control and will speak his words right through us. God uses us to reach others and share his love in this world. A few years ago, I kept getting this bellyache feeling. At my house, we call it the homesick, something's not right. I don't know, maybe you experience that yourself. Thoughts would come like daydreams to me, Bible studies, talking to people, closed-in spaces, which were all terrifying. And guess what? A bellyache followed every time. My pastor, he noticed the difference, and he suggested that maybe it's the Holy Spirit trying to talk to you, Jackie. When I realized that the Holy Spirit had an idea, belly aches in capital letters, talking to people and closed spaces, my response was, hold up, what? You have to be kidding me. I'm not qualified. I don't know my Bible backwards and forwards. I'm just me. I'm simple. And I'm too old. What if someone gets mad? What if I step on someone's toes? Believe me, I tried them all. There's more than that. When the days became nights, and then I prayed, mostly for the belly aches to stop, that homesick feeling had to go away. Then I gave in to the Holy Spirit, and I asked for his guidance. And I prayed, okay, God, if you planned this for me, I'm going to need your help. I feel that this was God's plan all along. He needed to humble me to fully trust him in what his plan really was. As we center ourselves to worship, will you join me in prayer? Dear Lord Jesus, may the words of my mouth be your words, and the meditations of all our hearts be good and pleasing to you, Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In your name we pray, amen. As I began pondering the sermon, I had the word seek keep running through my thoughts. Seek the word, a seek and find book. You know those, how excited we get when we find the word. 
We find the answer. The Bible is the best seek and find ever. Then there is, well, hide and seek. We hide, God seeks us, and he will always find us. So then came seek and see. And I thought, seek and see journey. Where God seeks, we seek. And as we seek to follow God with our open hearts, he uses each one of us to complete the plan he has before us. God guides us to see who, the what, and the why he's placed on our journey. Our journey with others is a very important one. We can learn so much from the other people in our lives. God uses us, just as it says in 2 Corinthians 4, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we, are, we ourselves have received from God. So we can comfort others. We can extend God's love to others with kind words and thoughtful actions. A simple smile is a start. God has prepared us for that from birth. Who can't smile back when that newborn smiles or a baby waves a gentle hello? We are all created to be used by God from day one. No matter how young, how old, how rich or poor, or somewhere in between you are, God wants to use you to bless the lives of others. When we seek to love God and obey his words, we then fully trust him to use us. Only God knows when that perfect time is on your journey. Sometimes God is already working through us and we are oblivious. Then there are those times that we can't understand why God prompted us towards a certain someone. But in those times, try hard not to to let fear get in the way. Try not to question it. Keep you and keep fear. Let me start that over. But in those times, try hard not to question it and don't let fear keep you from the uncomfortable edge. Maybe it is uncomfortable. Maybe it's unfamiliar. And maybe it's totally out of your ordinary space. Lean in in those times and trust that God believes in you and God believes this time is the right time, the perfect time for God to use you alongside that person on your journey or on their journey. Trust that God will be right there, right beside you to guide you through the uncomfortable, the unfamiliar, and the unknown journey ahead. I know being sensitive gets twisted into a negative response, but God does want us to be sensitive. He wants us to be sensitive to the needs of others. Many times, people don't know how to share the hurts that are deep within their hearts. They need someone to be sensitive. They need someone to truly listen, say a prayer with them, say a prayer for them. God uses us to draw that deep hurt to the surface where healing can truly take place. God uses us to help people feel worthy and loved. He loves us so much that we reflect that love into our lives and the people we reach. Think for a moment how God uses you to reflect his love in your everyday word and action. I have a seasoned friend and he shared a story with me from 1963, which was a hair before I was born. My friend worked with a man of a different race, and they stopped for lunch at a busy diner. They took a seat at the counter, and after a few minutes of going unnoticed, the employee came over and told them they wouldn't be served, but there was another place on up the street. My friend put his hand on his coworker's shoulder, and he said, let's go get lunch. I asked him to think about the difference he'd made. What if, what if the man had been working that day with someone else? And the response from that man was, oh, you go on up. I'll see you in an hour. My friend made a difference because God used him. 
that hand had to feel like the hand of God on his shoulder. You see, God lives in my friend, and God spoke right through his heart. The coworker is worthy and will forever remember that day, just like my friend does. God used my friend right there, that day, the right guy. God used him in a troubling situation to share his love. Think back for a moment. Where have you been on someone else's journey? God used you there. God worked through you in that person's life because God knows each and every one of our journeys. He knows where we need to be at just the right time. As we heard in the Genesis reading, Joseph was right there when God planned for him to be, where God planned for him to be. When his brothers tossed him into the cistern, it was just enough time for the Ishmaelites to come over the horizon to purchase him. Potiphar was meant to take him as a servant. Joseph didn't give up. He didn't give in. He let God use him. He worked hard, and his love of God overflowed as he built each relationship of trust with Potiphar, his wife, and later with the prison officials. All these things happened on Joseph's journey to fulfill the plan God had to use him. You see, in Joseph's journey, he made a difference in the lives of others just by living his own. Every person Joseph encountered, he encountered with God right by his side. We can make that difference too. We are everyday people with God right beside us. He makes that difference. God will guide us along others on their journey. He will give us the right words. He will show us the best action. His, his time is always the right time. All because this is God's plan. That as we live our lives fully trusting him, he lets us share in awesome experiences of his life-changing love as he uses us on the journey of others. My friend in high school invited me over to her house, and I got to meet her mom. They had four kids in this house, and I just remember how quiet it was. It was so peaceful. My home had four kids, and well, it wasn't quiet. And it was definitely not peaceful. I was amazed. Years later, I saw that mom at church with my future mother-in-law, and I always noticed how nice she dressed. Nice, but her shoes. Her shoes always matched her outfit. She had a red pair for her red suit, a yellow pair for her, red, or her yellow suit. Why was I obsessed with her shoes? Well, she sang at my wedding, not because of her shoes, and I later had four daughters of my own, and I often wondered, once I had them, how she did it. How did she have a peace-filled house? How did she clothe four kids and still have cool shoes. Well, someday I will, I thought. Maybe even I'll have a red pair. As God does, he used this peace-filled lady on my journey. She shared in my joy and my frustrations, and she always had the scripture ready to back it up. She just oozed, oozed God. All I felt was peace after talking with her. She was always ready to let that perfect love of Christ overflow everywhere she went, every single day. Well, I got my matching shoes. My second pair were actually red, and no confetti parade. Then it came to me. It's not about the shoes at all. It's all about the someone used by God on my journey, used to make a difference. Reflecting Jesus in every step, it wasn't her shoes, it was the feet in the shoes, the feet of Jesus. She served him every step, 
and overflowed his perfect love on my journey by living her life reflecting Christ. Now, when I wear cool shoes, I think of the people God used on my journey who walk with him, who trusted him, and they trusted him to fully use them. God is the only one who knows our journey ahead. It doesn't matter whether the path makes sense to us. What matters is that we seek to follow his lead, feel him beside us, and trust his perfect love to flow through us into the life of someone else. Each time a trouble happens, we have the choice to lean in and seek God or hang back and muddle in the mess. Makes sense to me to choose the one who knows. God stands ready and willing to transform our lives from the inside out. I think back on my journey, and it seems that when I felt things couldn't get any worse, God placed someone, and sometimes it took a group of someones, alongside me. Those someones, along with God's perfect guidance, God's perfect words, and God's perfect love, got me through. All because those someones made the choice to let God lead. I was allowed to feel that special love that only comes from God through each one of his people. The good news here, God is in our lives. Our journey is not over. God has brought us together, and he has plans for us. We just need to lean in and seek his direction and trust God to use us. Look back. This is my challenge. Look back and see where God has used you on someone else's journey. Then pray about where God wants to use you ahead on your faith journey. Will you pray with me? Eternal God, you call us to a journey that we cannot see the path ahead. Give us faith in the unknown, trusting that your hand is leading us and your love is surrounding us. As we go forward, use us, Lord, to grow disciples and to grow your kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen. Will you stand as you're comfortably able? By the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will. I 
remind you about the prayer parlor in the back. Anyone is welcome. It doesn't matter what your prayer is. It's all important to God. Go forth and seek God on your journey. Seek the people that God has placed on your journey and let him use you. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>